Hello and welcome everyone. Today we're going to discuss an intriguing topic, why American patients are choosing to travel abroad for medical treatments. We're exploring the reasons behind the growth in the U.S. medical tourism market, the motivation of U.S. patients, their concerns, and their common characteristics. Laura will be asking me questions and I'll be answering based on my professional experience. So without further ado, Laura, I'll hand it over to you to start asking me the questions. Okay, let's start. Can you start by explaining why medical tourism has become a popular option for U.S. patients? So one of the primary reasons why U.S. patients gravitate towards medical tourism is for cost savings. As you know, in America, we pay the highest amount for healthcare than any other nation. And so patients are always looking at ways they can cut on their medical expense. And so medical tourism has become really attractive to them for this reason. But patients also travel because some procedures may not be readily available to them in America, like specialized procedures or unique procedures. So they travel abroad for that. But what's really primarily driving the market in the US is cost savings. Mm. Mm -hmm. That is fascinating. Mm -hmm. Now. How much can U.S. patients save by traveling abroad for treatment? Yeah, so traveling abroad for medical treatment can be very substantial when it comes to cost savings. And I've seen patients save anywhere from 40% to 80%, and that includes uh, the travel and accommodation. So they can really save a tremendous amount of money. Wow. Thank you, Gil. Mm -hmm. Next question. Can you give examples of treatments that U.S. patients commonly travel abroad for? So U.S. patients travel for a whole host of treatments. Um, they travel for anything from dental procedures uh, to cosmetic procedures to orthopedic procedures, things like knee replacements and hip replacements. So they travel for all sorts of procedures. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Next question. What are some concerns that U.S. patients have about traveling abroad for treatment? Yeah, so U.S. patients, they have a lot of concerns when traveling abroad. One of their primary concerns is quality of care. Um, even though the cost of health care in America is really expensive, we have a high quality of health care, right? So they want to make sure that even though they're saving money, that they're not sacrificing on their quality of care. So depending on the destination, they also may be concerned with safety. So as a facilitator, it's your job to let them know that you're going to have them staying in the safest location and the safest hotel and just reassuring them about the services you're going to provide and making sure that they feel secure when they travel abroad. They're also really cost conscious, so they want to make sure they're saving the maximum amount of money they can on their medical procedures when they're traveling abroad. So so it's, it's a lot of different things that they're concerned about, but as a facilitator, you need to be equipped to address any questions they have or any concerns they have when they're traveling abroad and be able to just answer those in depth for them. But uh, yeah, I would say quality of care. They want to make sure they're saving uh, the most amount of money when they're traveling abroad. And they also want to just make sure they're staying in a safe environment and that they're comfortable while they're abroad. Thank you, Gil. Mm -hmm. How do facilitators assist patients during the medical tourism process? Yeah, so medical tourism facilitators are a central part of the medical tourism process. They help patients from A to Z. I mean, they can help them with everything from getting their passports and their visas to booking their flights and accommodation. Um, yeah, so they help with everything. Also, making sure that they transfer the patient's medical records to the overseas healthcare provider in a secure manner. Um, setting up entertainment, making sure the patient is at their doctor's appointments while they're abroad. I mean, they really, they really help with every part of the medical tourism process. And some patients need more assistance than others while they're abroad. It really depends on what the patient needs from you as an individual. But medical tourism facilitators, they really help the patient in every phase of the medical tourism process. And I always like to say, as a facilitator, you want to be the first person that the patient talks to when they land in their overseas healthcare destination. And you also want to be the last person they talk to when they're leaving their medical tourism destination. So you really want to be with them through the whole process and through every phase while they're abroad. What are some common characteristics of U.S. medical tourists? So some common characteristics when it comes to U.S. patients is one I like to say is that it's not a lot of people think that it's just uninsured individuals that travel outside the U.S. for medical care, but it's also underinsured individuals. And when I say underinsured, what I mean is these individuals have insurance but it doesn't adequately cover all their needs, all their healthcare needs. So they still have, even though they have insurance, they also have to still travel to other destinations to save on the out-of-pocket expenses they have to pay. So it's uninsured individuals as well as underinsured individuals. And they're also really cost conscious. So they know they can save money abroad, but they want to know where they can save the maximum amount of money when it comes to medical care abroad. They also do a lot of research as well. 
They do a lot of research because although we pay a high amount for health care in the U.S., we have a high quality of care. And so they want to make sure even though they're saving 80 percent, they're not sacrificing on a quality of care. And some people have grown up believing you get what you pay for. So you have to be able to dispel any notion they have about getting low quality health care or although they're saving money, they're going to be sacrificing on a quality of health care. That's not the case. They're not going to be sacrificing. But when these questions come up, you need to be able to address them because they are going to have those concerns. Uh, of the quality of care when they go abroad and making sure that they get the highest quality. What are some preferred destinations for American patients traveling abroad for medical treatment? Yeah, so American patients, they travel to neighboring countries as well as non-neighboring countries. So they go to countries as close as Mexico, Costa Rica, and Colombia, and they travel as far as Thailand and Turkey to get medical care. So it really just depends on what they're trying to accomplish as a medical tourist and how much they're trying to save and what the destination is known for. But they travel all around the world for medical care. There's not one specific destination that they go to. Okay, thank mm -hmm. you. As a medical tourism facilitator, what steps do you take to ensure your clients get top medical treatment? Yeah, so the best way to ensure that your patients get top medical treatment when they travel abroad is by simply working with the best healthcare providers, right? Making sure that the healthcare providers you work with have an accreditation, whether that's a JCI accreditation or equivalent one, but making sure that a third party has validated this healthcare provider and they verify that this organization holds themselves to a certain standard. And also it's good for you as a facilitator to do site visits, right? Go on site, physically meet with the healthcare providers, tour the facility, make sure the facility is up to par with modern standards. So there's, there's a variety of things you can do. You can also talk to past patients that the healthcare providers have dealt with or that have been to this uh, medical facility and who have gotten treatments from this medical facility and really just doing your due diligence as a medical tourism facilitator. So there's a host of things you can do. We cover this in a whole chapter in the Certified Medical Travel Agent Certification. So we really show you how to vet these healthcare providers, but those are some places to start. Okay. Mm -hmm. Final question. Mm -hmm. How do you make sure your medical tourism company is protected from liability during the medical tourism process? So as a medical tourism facilitator, the best way to protect yourself is by making sure you have solid medical tourism agreements in place. A hospital agreement is a, is a great place to start, and that spells out what you expect from your overseas healthcare provider when you send patients to them. Also making sure you have a patient waiver agreement so the patient understands what you provide as a medical tourism facilitator and what you, and what you won't be providing. And when I say what you won't be providing, you want to let the patient know that you aren't a medical provider. You won't be administering any medical procedures. You don't have any medical staff on your payroll. And you really just want to let them know that you're a separate entity than the overseas healthcare provider. And that way, if an unplanned event happens, they understand who is responsible for what. And also, you want to let them know that all the information that you're going to be providing to them is going to be educational in nature. So all this should be spelled out in your patient waiver agreement. Another thing you want to have in place is liability insurance and complication insurance. And in our contracts that we provide to members, we always have a space in there that goes over complication insurance. And it gives the patient the opportunity to either accept complication insurance or reject it. And that goes a long way. If they reject it, at least it shows that you would take a proactive step to give them complication insurance and that they rejected it. And if they accept it, then obviously if something goes wrong, they'll be protected. So there's a whole host of things and risk management tools uh, that we provide to our members. But yeah, contracts is the best way to go when it comes to protecting yourself and protecting your business in the medical tourism process. Thank you, Gil. That was awesome. <laughs> Thank you. And so we want to thank you guys for watching this video. And if you're in the process of starting a medical tourism company, or if you're looking to grow your current medical tourism company, reach out to us. I'm going to leave some links below to our membership program and our certification program, as well as our contracts. But thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you have a good day.